please, God. This is God. Hey guys, welcome back to some more reviews. The Explorer 4 here, Horror Boy 465, aka Nate Murphy. Coming to you guys without a beard. The beard's gone. Sad face. But um, welcome back to some more reviews. Today we are continuing the reviews on the Saw franchise. And today we're getting to the very first sequel in the series. And that is one of my favorite movies. And that is Saw 2. Now this is the two disc special edition. This is also the uncut version. And I've always loved the tagline for this movie where it says, Oh yes, there will be blood. I also love Saw 3's tagline, which we'll get to that in, uh, a little bit later when I do that review. But yeah, Saw 2, getting to this movie, came out in 2005. It's a 6.6 .6 on IMDb, directed by Darren Lynn Bowsman. And Darren Lynn Bowsman would go on to direct Saw 3 and Saw 4. And... Real quick, I thought that Darren Lynn Bowsman did a really good job kind of just, you know, bringing what James Wan did and taking it um, a little bit of a step forward and adding a little bit more onto James Wan's uh, story and uh, or Lee Winnell's story and just doing a great job of picking up where James Wan left off. And I thought that he did a really good job of directing. Um, just really great job by Darren Lynn Bowsman. The only really, the really the only Saw movie that I, that I think is just meh by Darren Lynn Bowsman is Saw 4, which we'll get to that later as well. But that's probably the only Saw movie by him that I think is just meh. The rest of these movies that are by him, like Saw 2 and 3, they're just really great movies. But um, as you guys can see, this is the 2 special edition, special edition, sorry. And I really love how they have that 3D cover where you can see the key in the eye. Sometimes it goes away, sometimes it's there. Take the slip cover off. Really awesome slip cover. You have the DVD. And the DVD is very well designed. I can say this is a much better improvement of a special edition than the first movie because um, in the first movie, that special edition, there was only like maybe one feature that I really liked, and that was probably that feature I talked about the movie. And the rest of it was like posters and still galleries and trailers. And that stuff was pretty cool too. But, you know, I wish there would have been a little bit more on the, on the special features side of things on that DVD. But, like, as far as, like, visual and audio go goes, um, and the first movie special edition, the audio and, you know, the, the, the video is just great. It's definitely a remastered version of the uh, original movie. But this is also a remastered version of Saw 2. Now, granted, it's not Blu-ray, so it's not the clearest it could be, but it's definitely, I think, a lot more clear. I think, like, the um, the screen format is better, and it's uncut, so you're getting even more gore. And for the longest time, I owned the regular DVD of Saw 2 until I had found out about this special edition. I think it was when I bought Saw 3. I think it was when I bought the regular DVD of Saw 3. They had the trailer for Saw 2, the special edition. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I put it on my, like, wish list, I guess, and one day I seen it for very cheap. I think it was, like, two or three bucks. So I was like, all right, I'll trade in my regular Saw 2 for this Saw 2. So I sold my other version of Saw 2 and bought this version, and um, I think I also bought the two-disc edition of Saw 1. And then what's funny is that I believe when I got Saw 4 and I had the regular version of Saw 3, on Saw 4, they said, oh, Saw 3 Special Edition, 2 disc set. I'm like, oh, come on, man. So I had to go back and rebuy Saw 3D, or not 3D, but Saw 3, and I uh, had to get the 2 disc Special Edition of that because I love the first three movies. But, um, yeah, Saw 2, there's the case. Sorry I've been rambling on for like three minutes, but this is where I keep the comic book at. Um, this originally came in, the 2 disc Special Edition of Saw 1. But I keep it in this case because, like I said in the previous review, it just keeps it a little bit more secure. So yeah, you got Saw Rebirth. Kind of a prequel, uh, I guess, to Saw 1. Kind of tells the story of John Kramer. I think I showed you guys a couple pages from this in the previous review. But yeah, if you ever get it, it's pretty interesting to read through. You know, you see the backstory of John Kramer and how he got involved with his first trap and started designing his first couple of contraptions. 
And I also really, really enjoy, uh, well, of course, you get a freaking advertiser for Devil's Rejects. But I, I love this right there. That is like, if I can get a poster of that, I just get a giant poster of that. Or heck, even if it was a t-shirt. I mean, and of course, the artist credit right there. Try to get that in there. That's who drew it. And um, to get a poster of that would be freaking amazing. Because look how just amazing that looks. Just a freaking fantastic artwork right there. So that's the comic book. Show you guys some of the artwork on the disc. The artwork is really great. You have... Oh, my bad. I <laughs> just dropped it. But, uh... It's like, oh, yeah, great artwork. Let me drop it. But, yeah, the artwork is pretty good. You have the furnace, the saw blade, pretty cool. And, uh, the second one, you have the bonus materials on. It has needles on it. And the saw blade is pretty cool. Definitely went all out with the design on this DVD, which was really great. Um, and, uh, yeah, the comic book, which came with the first movie, but I just keep it in there. But, yeah. DVD wise, great. I mean, you got a lot more features on it. You got Zombie, the short film by Darren Lynn Bowsman. I think that that's kind of what got him the spot to direct Saw 2. Um, the Scott Tibbs documentary, which is a pretty fun little thing where, you know, there's this guy named Scott Tibbs and he's kind of like, oh, I want to do a trap and he wants to find out more about Jigsaw. And, um, you know, stuff happens in that. If you guys want to check it out, you guys can. Um, the Making of Saw 2, which is like. Uh, I believe like at least a six part featurette you have the story behind the story which was the story behind what what led to the events of making saw one you got greg hoffman in memoriam a really good tribute to producer greg hoffman then you got play me a set top game which is a pretty interesting idea where you navigate to the house that jigsaw has this game in it's a pretty cool concept and i know that i've been rambling on for six minutes but and, you know, Saw 2 is one of those stories that I'm sure that a lot of people know about. Um, it's definitely got the, uh, story-wise, definitely got an on-par story with the first movie. Um, I think, honestly, this movie and Part 3 are, you know, on the same level, or at least around the same level as the first movie. You know, they all have great acting, they all have a great story, they all have great characters. Um, Saw 2 and Saw 3 have a little bit more gore. A little bit more traps. Um, so you're still getting story and characters in these movies. That's what I really love about Saw 2 and Saw 3 is that. And, and also especially in this movie. Because I think this one's a little bit more better than Saw 3. But in this one, you're not only are you getting the story still. You're getting the characters still. I mean, you got Donnie Wahlberg in the movie. You got Tobin Bell coming back. You have Shawnee Smith coming back as Amanda. So the cast is great. Um, you also just have great direction by Darren Rebousman. You got great set design by, uh, I kind of want to see did the set design, David Hackle, who also did the set design for Saw 3, I believe. Yeah, Saw 3, Saw 4, and I think maybe Saw 5, but I know for a fact he directed Saw 5. And I think he also did it for pretty much the rest of the Saw movies, David Hackle. And David Hackle did a great job on set design. I mean, the house that they're in is just disgusting and gross. And they did a really good job also replicating the bathroom scene, which is pretty cool. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of good stuff to this movie. It's definitely on the same level of the first movie. I think that it still has those suspenseful moments, still has the thrills, still has just the really creepy ideas, the creepy traps, the absolutely just terrifying traps. And Saw 2 picks up right after Saw 1. By the way, spoiler alert, these reviews are going to contain a lot of spoilers, just to let you guys know, the spoiler alert. Picks up right where the first movie left off, we have um, this guy who's in this Venus flytrap, which is a pretty cool concept, where it's a mask that encloses on your face, and it has like these nails inside of it and stuff, pretty cool concept. Pretty much to open up the movie is that trap, and then we have um, Detective Matthews. I believe is, yeah, Eric Matthews, who is Donnie Wahlberg. And Jigsaw kind of calls him out and tells him to come to this location. And also Eric Matthews' son has been kidnapped by Jigsaw. And Eric Matthews goes to this location where you have Tobin Bell playing Jigsaw once again. Great job in this movie by Tobin Bell. 
And pretty much the rest of the movie is, you know, Donnie Wahlberg finds out about his son being held, you know, held captive in this house with, with his other people in it. And we follow Donnie Wahlberg's journey as well as the people in the house. You know, there's a lot of cutting back and forth between Donnie Wahlberg's character and the people in the house. And while the people are spending more and more time in the house, more and more people get knocked off. And the story is just great. I mean, the simple story, kind of, but it also, when it plays out and it goes into the twist, you understand why it ends up being kind of a complex, you know, plot. Um, and I'm going to get into the twist here in a minute, so spoiler alert for that. But um, throughout the movie, Donnie Wahlberg is just pretty much told to talk to Jigsaw. He's like, if you can follow the rules, if you can talk to me, I promise you'll see your son again. So it's all about just wondering, you know, how much Eric Matthews can keep calm, how much time he can have to where he'll just have to wait for his son to be okay. And the more and more that people die in the, uh, in the, uh, on the camera, on the TV screens that he's watching, the more and more hesitant he gets, the more and more angry he gets until he finally snaps. And you have that great scene where he freaking just destroys Jigsaw, freaking breaks his finger, I'm pretty sure breaks his face, and Jigsaw says, game over, I'm taking to the house. And what I love is that, you know, throughout the movie, you have the story of Eric Matthews and Jigsaw, they're talking, and all the scenes between him, between uh, Eric Matthews and Jigsaw, it's just really great dialogue, really, ga really great tension, um, to where you're not really sure what's going to happen. You know, will Eric Matthews stay calm or will he just snap on this guy? And I really enjoyed that. Um, there's also where you get back to the house, a couple traps I like. I like the furnace trap, the, guy, the, the OB guy. He uh, gets caught in this furnace trap and gets burned to death. Um, or the needle pit trap, which is where Amanda falls into, and she has to dig through these freaking, this giant pit of needles, these like dirty needles she has to dig through, which is a painful scene to watch. There is the, uh, the keyhole trap, where the guy turns the key, looks inside the keyhole, and there's a gun on the other side, shoots through and shoots his eye, um, and blows his brains out, pretty crazy death scene. Um, there's where... Pretty much the uh, this big guy who I think is and I think they're all involved with Eric Matthews because Eric Matthews has done like these false sentences to where he planted evidence and got them put back in jail and pretty much they also sort of find that his son is in there with them and this one guy he kind of goes psycho and kills someone he kills this guy with a freaking nailed baseball bat in the back of the head. You have this freaking brutal trap where this girl goes in and she sees a needle in this box. So she reaches through and she can't get out because she reaches through these razors. And they cut her wrists and she's pretty much going to bleed out to death from that. It's like a crazy scene. And it pretty much comes down to um, Eric Matthews' son and Amanda. They're in the cellar of this house and they find the bathroom from the first movie, which I thought was really cool. And you see, like, Zep's body and Adam's body. You see the saw from the uh, original movie. And I like how this guy is going around and checking everybody's necks for the combination of the safe because there's a cure in there. This poison they got in them. And it's a crazy scene where he just, the girl, Shawnee Smith, pretty much says, well, how are you going to find out what your number is? And he cuts the number off the back of his neck. And then... You think that Eric Matthews' son is probably passed out or whatever. Grabs a saw blade, just cuts his guy's throat. And pretty much um, Eric Matthews goes to the house. When he gets in there, um, he finds the cellar, goes down, gets drugged. And when he wakes up, he finds out that Amanda is going to be the next jigsaw. And at this point, the whole apprenticeship stuff was not too silly. It was kind of like, all right, you know. She survived the first movie. Jigsaw is getting pretty sick. And he's going to need somebody to take over his work. So Amanda made sense. But when you get to stuff like in the Jigsaw movie and in Saw 4, when you got Hoffman, it's like, oh yeah, Hoffman was also there. Hoffman was the first person who's going to have be his assistant. I'm like, really? So in the first three movies, there's nothing that even shows Hoffman being around Jigsaw. He was in the third movie like for like one scene. And 
it just felt like in Saw 4, it was like, oh, yeah, we'll just make Hoffman his apprentice. We'll throw in a couple flashbacks. I'm like, come on. And then it's like Jigsaw. It's like, really? So he had, like, two backup apprentices. So it, that kind of stuff got him on nerves in later on movies. But in this movie, it still can be taken seriously. It's not silly. And it makes a lot of sense. And you have Amanda. She pretty much chains up Eric Matthews' foot. Um, chains him to that pipe in the bathroom. Great ending where she walks out and says game over. Close the door. And you have Jigsaw, the last shot of the movie. Jigsaw sitting there laughing. And also I think Eric Matthews' son lived. I think he survived the game. And because Jigsaw tells him earlier on in the movie. Because Eric Matthews is like, where's my son? He's like, he's in a safe place. And he literally is in this like little safe. That's right where the police were the whole time. So it was just like one of those things where, you know, if Eric Matthews would have lost his cool, if he would have just stayed calm and talked to Jigsaw, he would have seen his son again. So it was just the irony of it. it's like, wow, he would have seen his son again if he would have stayed cool. But Jigsaw told him, you know, don't break the rules and you'll see your son again. And the movie is just, it's a great sequel. I think it's still on part of the first movie. It's still one of my favorite horror films to watch. Um, love the concept of the house, love the shots of the movie, love the cinematography. I love the style of the movie, how it feels even more dirtier than the first one. Um, Darren Lynn Bowsman did a great job directing it. David Hackle did a great job on set design. Um, just a lot of care was put into this movie. And, you know, acting and gore effects and just, it's a lot of good stuff in this movie. And I can definitely see why to most people it's their, one of their favorites, or some, some people it is their favorite. But Saw 2 is a great movie, um, still on part of the first movie. Um, it has a, really, a lot of stuff that's really awesome. And um, if you're a fan of Saw, Saw 2 is definitely recommended for you. Or for, or for any horror fan out there. Saw 2, I recommend it. It's, it's just a, it's a great time. It's a great sequel. And, um, has the gore, has the suspense, has the stories, has, well, the story, has the, um, the characters, um, has good ideas to it, has imagination to it, and these traps. And, you know, it's just, it's a well-made movie. A very well-made movie. And if you can find this to the special edition, Find it and get it because it's uncut, you get more gore, and you get a lot of features. And um, also, I know that when they made this movie, they kind of, they made a wise decision in that they still, they could have just went out and made this movie with a giant budget, but they said, no, we're going to give another filmmaker a chance, who was Darren Lynn Bowsman, the same chance James Wan got, and we're going to give him a little bit of money. And not too much money, but, you know, a little bit more than James Wan had, but not too much money. And we're going to give them limited time. And I like how they did that because most studios would not do that. So I can definitely say that uh, Greg Hoffman, the producer, rest in peace to him. I know he had a lot of passion in this franchise. I know that he had a lot of passion behind James Wan and Darren Lynn Bowsman. So it's really awesome seeing the uh, memorial for him on the second disc. So, um... Yeah, I mean, the movie is just well made. It's a great time. There's not much else I can say about it. It's just a great sequel. So if you guys want to check it out, check out Saw 2. Um, it's a good movie. recommend it. And anyways, guys, thanks for watching the review. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you guys later on for my review of Saw 3. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. The Explorer 4 out. See you guys later.